Plus, the other primary producers, these amazing organisms, are capable of capturing the energy of sunlight and fixing in the form of potential chemical energy in organic compounds, which become food for we eat. As a result of photosynthesis, the plant releases oxygen for we breathe. To minstrel their photosynthetic activity is special essential for us. With it, we can obtain the information about the reflection of plants in different conditions. Then here comes the question, how can we minstrel it? There are five different methods of detecting plant photosynthetic performance. By measuring the uptake of CO2, the production of oxygen, the production of carbon hydrates, and the increase in dry mass, also the growth for four reasons. Today, I will introduce two non-destructive, rapid, and in real-time methods to detect the plant photosynthetic activities, the bermonis and the monitoring pump. We shall take a small look at the detail of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, like its name, can be separated into two phases. Photon light dependent reaction. Plants absorb visible light and convert the photon energy into the immediate chemical energy, ATP and NADPH synthesis. Carbon cycle. The plant uses ATP and NADPH to make carbon hydrates like glucose. The principle of Bermonis, which is a real time gas exchange instrument, is to measure the difference of CO2 concentration in curators and the surrounding area per unit time per unit leaf area. This system estimates the whole photosynthesis period is regarded as a standard method indicating the maximum photosynthetic activity of leaves under the measurement environment conditions. Bermonis is made up of six components, curators, magnet valve, flow controller, two channel pump. The temperature and the relative humidity essential. Of course, the most important CO2 sensor. In Bermonis system, instead of only one leaf, it can detect the canopy photosynthetic performance at the same time. Four ten leaves were clamped into ten transparent cubes. The gas molecules consist of different elements like CO2 and water, which have a specific absorbed bond in the mid infrared. CO2 sensor is also called infrared gas analyzer. The infrared ray passes through such gases with the energy reduction. As part of the infrared ray is absorbed by the gas, the maximum absorption wavelength of CO2 is 4.26. In Bermonis system, the magnet valve controls the two-channel pump to change the air from the cuvette channel to the environment channel, and from the environment channel return to the cuvette channel every 5 minutes with 6 liters air per minute. CO2 concentration and the water content in both reference and the sample chamber can be measured directly from the system. Net photosynthesis rate, transpiration rate, and the storm metal conductance can be calculated from the known parameters. With the gas exchange meter, the underlying theoretical base of fluorescence changes in plants are not so straightforward. Chlorophyll fluorescence is lightly emitted by chlorophyll molecule from excited to non excited state. Photosystems like PS2 and PS1 are light harvesting complex, which are embedded in the thylakoid membranes. They contain a chlorophyll molecule. This molecule gets trapped by light, then get boosted to a high energy level, which bounces around the photosystem until it reaches the reaction center. Then an electron acceptor come and pick it up, deliver them to an electron transport train. The electron will move down this train until the energy given off to make ATP. The absorption band of chlorophyll molecules is located in visible light. 
Growth for A shows maximum absorption at 435 and 670 to 618 nm. Growth for B shows absorption peak at 480 and 650 nm. Carotenoids shows absorption spectra at 420 to 524 nm. Let's take a close look at the structure of a PAM fluorometer. Basically, it's including mineral ring light, actinic light, saturation pulse, and a detector to get fluorescence signal. Some fluorometer will offer the far red light to oxidize the primary electron acceptor. This parameter can be gained from the system. Why can we detect the photosynthetic performance by measuring the chlorophyll fluorescence? Light energy absorbed by chlorophyll molecules in a leaf can undergo of three phase. It can be used to drive photochemistry. Excess energy can be dissipated as heat or it can be re-emitted as chlorophyll fluorescence. These three processes occur in competition, such that any increase in the efficiency of one will result in a decrease in the yield of the other two. Hence, by measuring the yield of chlorophyll fluorescence, information about changes in the efficiency of photochemistry and the heat dissipation can be gained. So we can by measuring the fluorescence signal to derive plant photosynthetic performance. What's the meaning of these parameters? They seem not so friendly. After dark adaption, all the primary electron acceptors QA are available to carry electrons. At this time, the device remits the mineral light with very low energy. Most of the light will drive the photochemistry to reduce the QA. Here we can get FO. Then, the device will offer a saturation pulse. All the QA will get electrons. At this time, the heat is still at a low stage. The QA can't carry more electrons. The most light will emit as fluorescence. The maximum fluorescence can be gained. After that, the device will offer actinic light. The heat will arise in this period, so we can get maximum fluorescence under light. FV ratio FM is a calculated parameter which can reflect the maximum efficiency of PS2. Yet of PS2 means the efficiency of photosystem 2. This parameter means the proportion of light absorbed by PS2 that is used in photochemistry. And also we can get electron transport rate and the non-photosynthesis quenching and so on. Until right now, do you have some ideas about these instruments? Let's make a small conclusion. Firstly, monetary palm is smaller and easy to transform. It can be used in the field. Secondly, net photosynthesis, which detected by Bermonis, is regarded as a standard parameter to reflect the plant photosynthesis performance as well as CO2 assimilation. However, the underlying theoretical base of fluorescence parameters changes in plan is complex and the corrective interpretation can often be difficult. Thirdly, Bermonis is relatively stable. In the 68 observation days, Bermonis shows 66 days effective monitoring. However, monetary pump shows only 44 days. It's because of monetary pump detects only one leaf. So it's susceptible to interference. Additionally, there's not enough time to explain the graphics in detail. The results presented above indicated the call for fluorescence parameter is relative to instrument of photosynthesis performance. It's not in units of CO2 assimilation. Hope this video can help you understand these two instruments. Thank you for your attention.